slump in our chairs and say, well, you know, actually, this earth might just tip her off the edge and we'll all die. So we might as well continue using plastic. But is that the way we should be? She doesn't think so. She says we need to be optimistic and act for the sake of the future generations. She's an amazing woman who is an author of a book entitled The Happy Hero. Check it out. Amazing. And she's going to talk about optimism and action around climate change. So, Lydia, over to you. Oh, I don't want to follow that. That was amazing. <laughs> <laughs> um, my name is Solitaire, and um, thank you so much for letting me be here. I also want to quickly say thank you to the Future Fashion Now people who've been running at the Sustainable Fashion Showcase and who decided I was badly dressed and so dressed to me today. I do not usually look this good. Um, I want to thank all of you in this room. I also want to, of course, acknowledge the incredible people who actually did not make it to this room. You are all people of courage, of compassion, of conviction, and it's an honor to be amongst people like you. Have you noticed how many times I've said people? Because that is the theme that I want to talk about. Because we say we're here to talk about the environment, but let's be honest, we're not. We're here to talk about people, to talk about people and our decisions and how our decisions have shaken the environment and how the environment is shaking us right back. Today, billions of people across our world are taking trillions of decisions and those decisions are affecting our living planet in ways big and small. Now, those decisions we now know need to change and in fact over the last few days we've had an incredible amount of evidence, particularly from Geo6, which we've heard from, around exactly how those decisions need to change. We now know in intricate, precise detail, and particularly in PowerPoint, how our decisions need to change. But is that how human beings work? Are we cost-benefit analysis, rational, logical thinkers? Or are we emotional, complicated, confused thinkers? Can I have my next slide? I would argue that not everybody in this room thinks like a machine. We don't all think like the, the left brain, creative, rational people. We are messy, we are complicated. We have endorphins and cortisol, these extraordinary chemicals in our blood, which make us angry and sad and stupid and argumentative, and that lead us to take decisions that do not operate in our best interest. Now, is there anything that can link up these two sides of humanity, the logic and the magic? I would argue it is stories, storytelling, no matter what culture you come from in this room, I bet that you tell your children stories. In fact, I bet that you tell your children stories before you teach them about facts. Because it's stories that help us make sense of the world. And in fact, stories the neuroscientists are telling us actually help affect what outcome we're going to get. If we tell ourselves a story of success, we're more likely to be successful. If we tell ourselves a story that we're going to fail, we're more likely to fail. So what story are we telling ourselves about right now on the environment? Now I've got a master's degree in Shakespeare studies, and I can tell you from my knowledge of Shakespeare there are only two stories. There are happy stories and there are sad stories. There are heroes, there are villains, there are utopias, there are dystopias. So within this environment, which of these two stories are we telling ourselves? The story that we can solve it, or the story that we are doomed? I decided to check. And so in 2017, I asked the global research company Ipsos to survey 21,000 people in 26 countries around the world and to ask them, are they hearing more about the solutions or the problems of climate change. And you can see up here, people around the world are overwhelmingly hearing the problem. That means we are telling them the very true story of climate chaos. But we are not telling them the equally true story 
of renewable energy, of regenerative agriculture, of public action, of grassroots change, of indigenous knowledge, of circularity and of community transformation. We're telling them the problem, but we're not telling them the solution. Now, I want to know what impact that is happening on my fellow human beings. And so we also asked Ipsos to check, the, for the first time, to ask people around the world whether they are optimistic, pessimistic about our opportunity to solve climate change. And you'll see the majority still believe, at least a little bit, that we might be able to solve climate change. The majority are soft optimists who think we might. You also have the pessimists who think we could, but we won't. The kind of techno optimists and human pessimists. We have what we need, but human beings are crap. But what struck me the most was the 14% of our fellow human beings who are now fatalists. These are people who think we are doomed. The opportunity to combat the greatest environmental challenge of our generation have, has passed. They have given up. And these fatalists are more likely to be young. 22% of under 35s are now fatalists. In some marketplaces, that's up to 39%. Now, these young fatalists are not the young people who work with me. They're not the incredible young youth champions we've heard from here. They're not even those angry young kids who are out on the streets today in the climate strike. By the very fact those children and those young people are raising their voice, it means they still have hope. No, these fatalists, these young fatalists, these are the silent. These are the people who have given up, the young people who believe that they don't have a future. What's that doing to their ambition? What's that doing to their drive to contribute to society? And most crucially, what that is that doing to their mental health? We have to change our story. We have to be able to give a sense of hope and a belief that it is still possible to take action. And we have to give everybody a role. If this is just about powerful people, we're going to fail. This must be about people power as well. So this is why last year, with the wonderful folks at the One Planet Network, Futera developed the Good Life Goals. We took the SDGs, the Sustainable Development Goals, that is you guys' responsibility, and we turned them into individual actions all of us as people can take. Because we deserve to be the heroes as much as you. Everybody deserves to be part of this change. In fact, to change everything, we are going to need everyone. Now, we've heard a lot about young people over the last couple of days. We've been inspired by them, we've been pushed by them. And I've been feeling, what's my role in this? I'm 45 this year. I am not a millennial or a Gen Z. I am not a bright young thing. I am not a future generation. I am not the future, but I damn well am the now. You are all the now. We are all the people right now. We are the tired, busy, overworked, overstressed people right now who get to decide whether those future generations have a future of hope or of fear. Whether you are young or you are old, you are the people right now who are getting to take that decision. I want to call this the solution century. I, we already have the answers, I've heard them over the last few days, from policy to technology to behaviour, I've heard all the solutions. We have the opportunity to start this solution century and our children and our grandchildren to solve it. So I beg of you, please, become defiant optimists. Be defiant in the face of environmental destruction and optimistic about the solutions and share the solutions as much as you share the problem. Be defiant in the face of destruction and optimistic about the ability for restoration. Be defiant when you feel your fear. The best way to feel your fear is to fucking do something. <laughs> the best way to deal with angst and anger is to take action. I'm sorry, I was told it was cute when British people swear. <laughs> so I want to leave you with this passionate plea based on all my knowledge of psychology and behaviour change. That if we want to save life on earth, we have to believe that that is possible.
Thank you so much for everything that you do and thank you for this opportunity to speak to you. Thank you.